The spring game at Nebraska was all that we dreamed it would be and more. Our reaction to Dylan Rayola's big day next. You are Locked On Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and that part of me is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go free now on the App Store and Google Play. Well, maybe uh, Mitch, Nebraska has like, uh, they, they have ownership of Park Place or one of those, or one of those boardwalk properties. Uh, premier, with- a premier property. Yes, yes. <laughs> I, think that's, I think that's what we saw on Saturday at Memorial Stadium. All right, so here we go. We are we are post spring game as we head into the uh, the uh, the wilderness of the summer and the in the early fall, uh, and a lot to react to from from the last few weeks, but obviously mostly on on Saturday. Uh, there was a, a game. There was a score. Uh, the 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 white team apparently beat the red team twenty five to twenty one. I'm being told. Is this right? Yeah. All I know is that Dylan Rayola and all the quarterbacks actually played for both teams. So. Not really seeing a whole lot of consequence from the uh, from the final score of the game. It was no. uh, not important. Yeah. So I mean, let's let's just open this thing up on the on on the first segment because I think our immediate spring game takeaway is basically the same as everybody else's spring game takeaway, which was um, Dylan Raiola was depending on your scale, um, either uh, exceedingly competent or incredible. Either way. Um, it's a, it's a huge deal for Nebraska, I think. And and it, and it does change the outlook of, of how we talk about this team in the summer and, and heading into the fall, Mitch. I mean, what's, what's your immediate thought? Yeah, I think we'll structure this and kind of go through each segment and each have a, a takeaway. And then as the week goes on, we'll get deeper into, I'm sure the quarterbacks and the wide receiver play and some of the other stuff that we saw on Saturday. But for me, Number one, and it's no surprise, you know, funny, I went into the spring game saying I was going to watch the lines. I was going to watch the defensive line and I was going to watch the offensive line. Well, first of all, I couldn't tell who was playing on the offensive line because those gray jerseys are like the friend of no one. I hate the gray jerseys. Do away with the gray jerseys. <laughs> Can't read the numbers. I didn't know who was playing. They're, they're on both teams, whatever. They don't so, have last yeah, names on there either anymore. I think that's maybe part of the problem. So yeah. I, I, uh, I, I was never going to watch the lines. Let's be real. It was all, <laughs> it was always going to be about the quarterbacks and the wide receivers. And if they just dumbed it down to the point where I thought they might, it was going to be a really boring spring game, but they didn't, they let those quarterbacks come out and play. And they were, they were very careful. They went Harburg, Riola, Kalen in order. So they would, it would be one series after the other, just they would switch teams. If you were, if you were, your, your, your series was up with the white team, you played for the white team. If your series was up with the red team, you played for the red team. They tried to make it as, as uh, unbiased, I suppose, from a coaching perspective as possible. And I think they, they tried and failed because one guy stood out and I'm a little bit um, I'm a little bit struck with awe at some of my colleagues in the media here who have just kind of taken it at face value with what Rule said about how this is a competition that's going to go into the fall and all of these guys played well and they're going to need all three. That part might be true. But, hey, did you watch the game? Like, <laughs> one guy made the throws down the seam, put the ball on the numbers, had incredible zip on his throws. One guy looked like a power five starting quarterback and the others looked like, you know, good players, competent players, but the kinds of quarterbacks that Nebraska has had in, in recent years, Heinrich Carberg looked improved, but he didn't look like Dylan Rayola. So it was a spring game. I get it. It wasn't necessarily like a great defensive showing out there, great defensive personnel that he was that he was um, chopping up, but he looked really good. Yeah, I mean, I, I had kind of been viewing him through the... I, I agree with that completely, by the way. Um, I had been kind of viewing him through the prism of, you know, I, I 
oftentimes when you get a quarterback as just as talented, straight up talented as he is, like and you and you bring him in, especially during his you know his first appearance in front of a crowd and and all that stuff, you get these flashes of um like you get the spectacular stuff and that blows people away, but then the little yeah. stuff kind of gets lost in the mud, um yeah. and the the poise and the calm and the leadership and and all that kind of stuff. He looked like he was in control. He looked like people, you know, are are sort of ready to to kind of follow him, jump on his back a little bit. He he handled all the little stuff pretty well. Um, and yeah. and you know, maybe we still we're still going to get the flashes of greatness and the and the you know maybe some disastrous throws come as a part of that somewhere down the line. But I think the thing that I was most encouraged about is the. I mean, we talked about it a little bit on Friday in the in the kind of preview, like. His his just like competency, and I feel like that's underselling it. Um, but I was incredibly encouraged to see him do the little things really well yeah. and make it look clean and calm. And I think his calm. Um, you think about the offense last year and how little of that it had. Um, it was so sporadic. It was it was big play or nothing. It was boomer bust. And you know it, that's that looked like a team to me that's going to be able to to put together nice long drives uh, led by a quarterback who, who has all the attributes that you want and can make is certainly capable of making big splash plays as well. So this, so the sky's the limit, but the floor is a lot higher. I think than than I maybe expected it to be for the first time around. Yeah. I think we'll get into it more when we just dissect the quarterback play um, later in the week, maybe on Tuesday. And I've got some, some video that we cut up of, of Matt Rule that I want to I want to share. People have probably heard it, but the the gist of this is that even doing the, the even he even threw the ball away, yeah, in, yep. in in a way that was the best of the quarterbacks. Like took his time, put it in a in a place where only his receiver had a shot at it. It wasn't going to get intercepted. There were two or three of those throws where I was even kind of shaking my head at his poise on a play that gained no yards that was a throwaway. So when you when you when you see that that kind of stuff from a true freshman um th- you know you've got a player who has the potential to be a real difference maker in a program and I think Nebraska has that guy at quarterback. I I, I feel confident in saying that after just this one spring. I did find myself wondering though how much of uh, you know us being kind of I, surprise is not the right word. Just, I guess, taken aback by, by his performance, obviously his talent level, uh, but the little things that he did well that we just went through, how much of that is, is comparing what Nebraska's quarterback play has given them over the last handful of years. Maybe that's something that we could dive deeper into later. Like <laughs> he just, he, he looked exceedingly, um, you know, I, like I said, I, I don't want to say that Yeah, he was just competent. He was a competent quarterback who made good decisions, good sound decisions, didn't put the ball in danger really at all. His one pick wasn't his fault, even though he took responsibility for it, which is something that a court quarterback should always do. Um, so he even checked that box after the game. So I don't know. I, I ran out of boxes to check. Uh, I, I think as we, as we got later into that performance. Yeah. I mean, he, his training showed that, that is another, um, you know, something else that I came out of that game thinking is that, you you saw a quarterback who appears to have had training beyond playing in high school and going to you know your elite eleven camps and and various things that are available to the top level quarterbacks around the country at the high school high school in the high school game. Um, Dylan looks like a guy who has worked with NFL quarterbacks, and he has. He looks like a guy who's been to. 3D QB in LA, which is a, a place that has that has churned out NFL quarterbacks and and done work with players like Matthew Stafford in the off season. He looked like a guy who is getting ready next month to go throw alongside Patrick Mahomes or do exercises alongside Patrick Mahomes, where he like hangs upside down from a jungle gym or something like that. I don't know. This is Mahomes. Mahomes. Um, like his almost physical therapy kind of coach, um, Bobby Strope, the uh, expert out of Texas who has moved to Kansas City and worked with another of our favorite guys, Connor Bobby Witt Jr. Um, back in in um, a few years ago. So Dylan will be in Kansas City 
doing some of that. It's just the whole picture is of a quarterback who's on a different level with the kind of training, expertise, knowledge, um, awareness of himself and the offense around him than really anybody we've ever seen at Nebraska come in as a true freshman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a great starting point. That's for sure. And that will, that will uh, anchor our conversations throughout the the summer, of course, and um, into, into the fall. All right. Uh, we have plenty more takes for you guys. We'll, we'll, of course, you know, all of this stuff will be attached to quarterback, you know, so we'll come back to it. We'll, we'll jump back and forth, but plenty more uh, from our spring game takeaways when we return here on the Locked On Podcast. All right, we're going to talk about Monopoly Go here. Please support all of our sponsors, and I want to tell you about Monopoly Go. We've been tracking the leaderboards every day, keeping our eyes on the scores, putting pouring our hearts into it, and I'm talking about that mobile twist on the hit board game Monopoly. You've probably heard of it. It's been downloaded more than 150 million times. It's a great mobile adaptation of the game you grew up playing, Monopoly, and you can play it now anywhere, anytime. Explore hundreds of Monopoly boards from Las Vegas to Camelot to the moon, all while raking in a fortune. How do you play? Charge rent on your iconic properties, just like in the classic Monopoly, or go after your friend's Monopoly money by pulling bank heists and taking wrecking balls to their landmarks. So go see who's a Monopoly tycoon, who's gone bankrupt, and get yourself on the leaderboard. Download Monopoly Go today on the App Store and at Google Play. Okay, we're back on the Locked On Nebraska podcast, and I want to start this segment on kind of a sober note. Friday afternoon um, was an awful time around eastern Nebraska. The tornado outbreak around Lincoln and then Omaha um, was difficult to watch and and even more difficult to see um, the outcome of with so many people losing property. Fortunately, there was limited injuries and no loss of life um, in the state of Nebraska. W one of my primary takeaways from Saturday in Lincoln is simply how Nebraska football remains something that brings this community together. A lot of the talk at the stadium Saturday, Connor, was of course about those Friday storms, especially before the game. But the people I sensed felt an extra sense of togetherness by gathering to celebrate football after what we saw happen just a few hours earlier. So the spring game was well-timed and you heard a heartfelt message after the, the scrimmage from Matt Rule um, and his understanding of just how his neighbors and a lot of our neighbors were affected by um, a really rough, uh, rough day on Friday. Yeah. Another in a long line of examples of, of how Nebraska football kind of binds the, binds the whole state together, uh, I guess with some, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe unfortunate in, in some ways, obviously, but, but fortunate timing with the, with the kind of spring game and, and the way that it, um, you know, the, the time and place that it took place, I, I, you know, on a, on a bigger picture outside of the, the severe storms on, on Friday, I think it was, I think Nebraska football might've caught about the only four hours of sunlight, uh, this weekend too. So it's true. It's kind of just one of those things, um, you know, brings people together and, and not a, uh, not at all a surprising thing to see Nebraska, you know, full its uh, put its full support behind the the state and its its recovery efforts, which which are underway uh, right now. Yeah, yeah. The sunshine was nice. The weather was nice at the game on Saturday, um, and it gave us an opportunity outside of the rain, which would have would have been would have been tough to uh, to feature uh, the offensive weaponry that Nebraska debuted at the spring game if it had been pouring rain or spitting or windy in, in the way that it was for, for much of this weekend. But I know you want to get a little more Connor into what you saw from the skill guys on Saturday. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it doesn't come out, come without its downside as well with the, with the, um, if, going forward, you're, you're probably going to have an absence of a guy like Demetrius Bell probably would have factored into the equation. And then, mm -hmm. you know, even on the defensive side in Bly Hill, which is something we'll, we'll talk about when we get into the defense a little bit later in the week, but, you know, I, we, we, we talked a little bit about how the format would be advantageous for, for those guys going in and they wanted to call it the Nebraska shootout and, and all this stuff. So it was certainly set up to be an offensive powered day, but I, I think they're, I came away thinking that they might be a little deeper at wide receiver, 
even without going forward without Demetrius Bell, then then maybe I thought, um, you know, we didn't see much of Jamal Banks, but that just tells me that, you know, they're pretty sure about what he's going to give them. Um, yes. Isaiah Nair looked like the real deal to me. Um, you know, like explosive saw the good side of, I think, what he brought in the spring. Huge, huge shot play to Jalen Lloyd, which is going to be just a staple of the offense. I think those are probably your top three receivers. Didn't see any Malachi Coleman, but you know, he'll be out there because he gave you experience last year. And then Ja'Cory Barney, spectacular. You know, he popped. Um, Janir and Bonner was was really good. He, you know, had a had a tough contested catch from from Alex Bullock. Um, yeah. and and that's those are just wide receivers. You you know, Thomas Fedoni, you know, looked about as explosive as I've ever seen him. And Rule talked about it a little bit after the game and and just how he's now stacked up camps that are healthy on top of each other. And so he'll continue to get better and regain that explosiveness that he's lost with his various injuries. And Borkercher is still there at tight end. Didn't get a whole, you know, a big look at the run game, um, but I still think that was a net positive. Dante Dowdell flashed. Um, you know what you're going to get from, from Emmett Johnson. And there was flashes from guys like Quentin Ives and, and Micah Mazuka as well. Like I said, keep, keep in context the situation a little bit, but that that seems like a group of guys to me, Mitch, with a quarter, an exceedingly competent quarterback that you could win games with in this conference. Yeah, it, combined with with Raiola, um, that that yeah. becomes a more formidable group. You know, he adds something to to each one of those guys, and it is it is very notable that Nebraska has changed the look of its playmakers in such a short period of time. There were a lot of injuries at the end of last season, and. Yeah, Isaiah Garcia Castaneda is is still coming back from from a knee injury, and Another Nebraska one. likely lost Demetrius Bell. But all of those names that you mentioned, I, I just want to say one thing about Nair: when he has the ball in his hands, he just glides. I, I I could see him in the and he never really got the opportunity to do this at Texas, but I can see very much why Texas went after him after his his year, his big year at Wyoming, because he looks like a Texas wide receiver. He looks like those guys with long legs that just get the ball and they don't look like they're running very fast, but they're just eating up yardage. So th that's exciting. And, and Nebraska hasn't even the even the receivers that Nebraska's had who have been extremely productive in recent years, like Stanley Morgan and Samari Toure and Trey Palmer. They didn't they didn't have that kind of stride. Um, and I think that can be a lethal um, thing in the Big Ten. Um, I, and, and, you know, Nebraska's not playing in the Big Ten West anymore um so it's a different big 10 that nebraska's in but i but i picture him against some of nebraska's recent schedules and i think nayer would be a guy who could just eat up yardage and have a huge huge impact and you know that goes for um what his impact can be in this in this new look big 10 too so i'm 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 i come away more optimistic about him than just about anybody that i saw but yeah bonner and barney barney is explosive and the play where he went over the middle and ran to the sticks and caught the ball from Raiola right under the receiver's chin and took a shot and popped back up. He, it was a fourth and one play after that, but he just about got the first down. That really told me something about him too. I will say, in, in taking it with a grain of salt, now the running backs were pretty good. They were serviceable, a little better than serviceable on Saturday. When Dante Dowdell was running down the sideline on his 49-yard run, um, I, I just I, I rewound it. Um, was he hurt? And watching the replay, no, he was okay. Um, yeah. But I wanted to see who was chasing it because you know he's out running some guys, yeah. and it was a couple of it was a couple of down the the line walk on defensive backs. I mean, he players that you with would a limp though. He, he, it was hmm. it was odd. I, I don't know what that was, but maybe it's just, maybe it's just you know how he runs. I suppose maybe but. he was. Maybe maybe he was he was a little dinged, but. Um, those are not the kind of the kind of defensive backs that he'll be running away from when Nebraska plays USC and Ohio State. No, but they did some stuff in between the tackles, even though it wasn't full mm -hmm. on, you know, smash each other. Um, where the concepts looked good, and and you know the offensive line we we've talked about all spring. So, yeah, I, I think offensively it was a day where they wanted to showcase a lot of that, and and they did the job. They got they got a lot of that done. Um, so. Yeah, there's we we have more on top of this, and we'll, we'll continue on with that. Uh, I do wonder now. We're going to do our fair share of I think yelling on this podcast, but uh, <laughs> we'll ask the question: Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN? And you have to turn down the volume with all the yelling. They're not yelling about Dylan Raiola. That's only us. Make this switch to Locked On Sports today. A free. 
24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Mitch, will come back and share a couple more thoughts as uh, we come off the spring game weekend. Playoffs are going strong in the NBA and the NHL. Uh, baseball is about to roll into its second month here, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Anything you want, slap shots, home runs, slam dunks, like I, a personal favorite, Nikola Jokic to have a triple-double is a pretty much a guarantee that he's going to do so in the playoffs. Uh, all in an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Head to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. That is with our friends from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. I've been talking all month, Connor, um, Mitch Sherman here for game time about the game time app and how I can't wait to get to Kansas City. Well, I do have a trip coming up to Kansas City in May, and I can really start to think about it now that spring football is over. But I've also got a trip potentially to Yankee Stadium in conjunction with a, uh, a little work trip in the month of June. So I am going to use the Game Time app not just for the K, but also for the house that Ruth built. That They still call it that, even though it's a, a across the street um, from the uh, the original. But the experience that I have... I know will be better because of game time, which is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball. It makes getting tickets easier and faster. Prices on the game time app go down the closer you get to first pitch. It's all in prices, no fees at checkout, deals for specific zones of the stadium, flexible customer service. It's all there. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with the game time app. You can create an account and use the code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create an account and redeem the code locked on college. Check it out at gametime.co and download the game time app today. Lowest price guaranteed. All right. Welcome back. Uh, third and final segment here on a Monday post spring game. Uh, stick with us for all your takeaways as they'll stretch uh, deep into the summer. As I imagine I, I got, let, let's I'm going to look at it from a 40,000 foot view, kind of just an offensive thing. It's, we've been talking about, we've been centered on the offense and of course we'll connect back to the quarterback here, but you know, Matt rule said they'd be vanilla going into that, but the, and they were, the, but there were some pretty good flashes. I thought, of, um, you know, RPO stuff with the quarterbacks that that wasn't, you know, I, I don't think they had the confidence probably to get to last year. Clean screen yeah. game. I, I mean, yeah. they, they busted that out a couple times. Just some general short passing stuff that at first they couldn't execute last year and then they just completely went away from because they couldn't do that. Um, you know, I, I, I hope that doesn't lead to putting too much on Dylan Raiola's shoulders, but I, I, I think... The big picture is it's clear that they have a good understanding of what their quarterback's strengths are and what they do well, how they can use their skill sets to their advantage. Same thing goes for Harburg, too. You know, he looked better and cleaner. Um, you know, obviously his skill set is way different, though. So he was doing different things while while he was in the game. It 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 seems like a team to me, and you could use last year as an example of this as well, that has itself self scouted pretty well. Like they, mm -hmm. they don't do stuff that makes them too uncomfortable on offense. They, they kind of figured it out when, when Heinrich Harburg was running the triple option last year, like that's one of the things that he does well. And so I think you could apply that logic into this year and you know, you can ask the question, what does Dylan Rayola not do well? Um, maybe that's the case, but that should open up a ton on, on offense. And so there was just a lot of things I thought that looked, Cleaner, um, obviously anchored by the quarterback position, but uh, just I think they'll have way more at their fingertips this year just based off of what we saw on Saturday. Rule said vanilla in, in preview in the game. You think it was like vanilla, but he forgot to mention like the cookies and cream that's in inside the vanilla and a little yeah. bit of, a little bit of cookie dough. 
um, whatever, whatever other flavor is, is your favorite, you might be able to stick in there. It wasn't entirely vanilla. I mean, some of the stuff they did and we didn't see any flea flickers or reverses or jet sweeps. It was, so it was basic in the sense that these were traditional, um, passing, passing routes. And I think Dylan turned, um, to the wrong side once on, a um, on a bootleg or, or yep. some kind of a play action. And, you know, he faced a pass rush there and was able to throw it away into the flat, kind of a dangerous pass, maybe his worst pass of the day. But, you know, those are mistakes that you absolutely know you're going to get occasionally from um, a player who's who's in his first action in this system or his second or third scrimmage. So you take a little bit of that with with all of the the good that we saw. But, yeah, I mean, the the, the offense, you know, is it possible that that, that the the influence of, of Glenn Thomas has is this significant this soon i mean when he's talked uh publicly it's been pretty van- speaking of vanilla it's been pretty vanilla but you know maybe behind the scenes you know and then you throw in all of the new personnel uh he really has made a big difference in in kind of getting them all on the same page to run the system that works best for the players who are on this roster yeah that's the key for me and they 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 just they don't seem to you know, we, we can get a little crazy with, you know, coaches want to call offenses that they want to call. Like sometimes coaches are known for stuff. And I think that's where that's where this group of coaches really comes in handy for Nebraska because they're not they don't have any agendas that they want to be like, yeah, I want I, I we have to do this because this is this is us. This is a staple of of what we do. The only thing Nebraska would be tied to in that situation is, you know, running, running the ball and and trying to extend drives, which is not a negative thing at all. So. Um, yeah, it, it strikes me as a team that that had itself, you know, scouted pretty well and understands what they can and, and cannot do. Um, Mitch, is there anything else from the from the spring game that you had? Yeah, just the final takeaway here on day one of analyzing this, and this is a major downer, but we have to get to it. And it was mentioned earlier in the show, but Demetrius Bell, who was one of the top young, is one of the top young uh, playmakers on this team, somebody that Nebraska raved about in the work that he did as a scout teamer last year while he sat out and redshirted um, and then it had a good spring. He went down in the second quarter um, after taking a short pass from, from Danny Kalen. This was right after the play where Barney Jacory Barney went 78 yards on the kickoff return and, and was tackled by the kicker who he thought was on his team. Again, just like the bane of our existence is these, these silly gray jerseys that they put the offensive linemen and, and, and the specialists in like, stop with the gray jerseys already. You're ruining, you're ruining the game. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, uh, Barney, I think would have been just fine. Could have easily outrun the kicker. Had he known that, that Alvano yeah. was on the other team. I or mean, to give him a, a nice uh, stiff arm or something like that. He, you know? he, he, he said he wanted to like him. high five him and then Alvano's tackling him. And then to make matters worse, Demetrius Bell goes down with a major injury on the next play, which should have never happened because they should have been in the end zone. So mm-hmm. Um, that, that sounds like, you know, what rule said was significant. So that's the kind that you would expect is going to require surgery. Um, just a really tough blow for him to get dealt and for Nebraska to have to deal with here. Um, they are deep at receiver as we discussed, but that's tough. And then Bly Hill, who was one of the breakout guys of, on the defensive side, the transfer from an FCS school in Pennsylvania, St. Francis, just the net on the next possession, uh, defensively, he was hurt and had to be taken off by cart and maybe not quite as serious um you know called it rule called it semi significant but um Bly did post on on social media on Sunday saying that he would be back despite the injury and we don't know a timetable if it's if it's going to cost him this next season or if or if he could make it back at some point in 2024 but when you hear patellar um it doesn't sound good you know knee related um fairly major injury and uh you know we'll, we'll hopefully hear more about both of those guys uh here early in the in the post spring time mitch i don't know if you uh i don't know if you got a chance to watch the the television broadcast yet since you were at the game um but I skimmed through it both those things happen so this is we're talking about a span of probably five or six plays here you know and, yeah. and, and including that barney return um rule was in the on the broadcast while those, while both of those things happened and it was, uh, you know, and, and they just went dead, like silent and they, they were trying to move some stuff to, you know, they were like, Hey, take a look at, uh, 
your new practice facility and they showed some they showed some pictures and stuff like that and he was like yeah it's great we love it um <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh it was a tough watch for those six minutes which were um you know a, a, a real down moment during a otherwise very very bright saturday I'm sure he's like, get me the heck out of this place. I need he to was. be down on the field, not getting yeah. my players injured. He, he literally so, said during at, at one point, I quote, I hate that I'm up here right now. Yeah. <laughs> he said yeah. that on the television broadcast, which I don't blame him for. Well, the head coach, you you want to be there for the guys. Yeah. I mean, it's it's comforting for the players, you know, when Demetrius Bell goes down and he tried to get up and then he fell down again. And I thought Rule ran across the field to go out there, but it was it was somebody else, obviously, since 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 Matt was in the booth, but um, yeah, you want if as a head coach to help us feeling if you're up in the press box, you want to be down there and 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 at least be be there for them to see uh see your face. So uh I, I feel I feel for him on that one for sure. Um all right. Well, hey, uh continue to follow us on all of the podcast listening platforms. Download our download our download our show, like our show. Um, follow us on Twitter at locked on NEB, send us an email at locked on NEB at gmail.com. We'll be back on Tuesday with more analysis from the spring, deeper takeaways, more quarterback talk. We might even get into Nebraska Creighton baseball in downtown Omaha on Tuesday night. In the meantime, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app.